Hi folks, welcome once again to GazLab and today I'll be talking about my Raspberry Pi 400 all in one. So it's a keyboard with a built in Raspberry Pi 400 with an 1800 uh, gigahertz uh, processor on board, which is a bit of an upgrade on the Pi 4 bare bone board. Um, and it runs much, much cooler. Um, I don't know why, but um, it does. It runs much cooler. Amazing bit of kit. Um, my end game is to be able to take this thing out because it's it's got two 4K HDMI, micro HDMI ports, one USB-C, two USB-3 ports, one USB-2 and an uh, Ethernet port. I want to be able to take this out with a flat panel HDMI 4K screen that can run on a, um, a USB power bank and also the Raspberry Pi 4 which is light and small and will run on a, a USB power bank. So I can take one power bank, run the screen and the computer, keep my 705 charged um, and have a complete portable setup for running digital modes. But it also got me sort of thinking as well, um, could I use it for maybe um, an SDR receiver in conjunction with my 705 um, while I'm actually out and about? Could I then use it for um, aircraft radar? Could I do all that sort of stuff? And I then tried to run Cubic SDR and was um, startled to find that it doesn't actually support um, SDR play out of the box, which was a Linux rabbit hole in that it took me down this sort of... Uh, um, offshoot of trying to get um, the SDR play to work with Soapy and Cubic SDR. I did a lot of typing and um, I'm over that now. Um, so what I would suggest is that um, perhaps that scripting might be useful to you. So um, I eventually got to the point. So um, what I've done is I've taken Andy's instructions and I put them into five different scripts and I wanted to sort of show you how to set up a script which may be sort of something that you do on a regular basis to to various images maybe you've got um, I don't know maybe you've got five or six Raspberry Pis doing very similar things and you want to you know you want to change them from time to time or you want to add things to them but you don't want to keep typing everything out on each one or then copy the whole image and then rewrite the image because that takes time you can just run this one script you can put it on a usb pen take it to all of the raspberry pis and run that same script and it will then do the updates and do whatever it wants to do install software or whatever you've set it up to do so i'm going to show you how to do that so let's whiz over to the um, raspberry pi which is a black screen at the moment. Right, so what I'm gonna do here is, I've, you can see that I've created one there called example.sh. Um, what I'll do is, if I get rid of that one, we'll drag him over and drop him in the bin. Yeah, I do, I wanna trash that one. I'm gonna create a new file, okay? And I'm gonna call that one example. Um, I'm doing this one-handed, sorry. Um, example.sh, okay? sh and then say okay it's just that my keyboard's at a slight angle and it's banging on the desk and i want to keep doing that so now we've got this example sh down here if i double click on it it goes to the text um, editor so from this point on i can put in pretty much what i want so just for an example i'm going to put in apt um sorry no i won't i'll put in uh, sudo <laughs> Uh, apt hyphen get uh, update and then what I'll do is I'll put in there also sudo apt hyphen get upgrade and I suppose I should put on the bottom there as well um, sudo apt uh, auto uh, remove Okay, and also I might want to put, if I put minus Y there as well, um, the idea is that it will say yes if it's if it asks me um, to for some input. And at that point, I can then just say save. Now, well, I'm using this as an example, okay? And you can put anything you want in there. So, for instance, you know, if you wanted to, you could put... WSJT, you know, um, 
sudo app get install whatever you can put all of those sorts of things in there and maybe even you could tailor this to do some of the um if you're clever enough um with um with with some of the uh, the commands you can actually get this to also edit the config files and do all that sort of stuff so you can ask a script to do some quite in incredibly complex things but where they come become quite useful is repetitive tasks they're not always the best option um so you know all i'm all i'm saying is that if you want to sort of you know keep them handy it just means that if you download a fresh new version of um, whatever it is or you get a new raspberry pi um, and it uses a different version of the software and you can't get it to run whatever the reason is you want to be able to run these sort of scripts then they kind of have their use so we're going back over to the the, the screen there so what i've done is uh, we've asked it to save okay and then i'll close this but so you can ask this to do anything you want so now we've got this example.sh there, which is more than capable now of um, updating our Raspberry Pi. But before we do that, we need to change the properties here. So we're going to permissions. It's a view content I've set to anyone. I'll set the change content to anyone. And we'll say that uh, the execute to anyone. And now, right, instead of clicking on this and it goes to the text editor, if we double click on this now, it will come up to this window and it's asking us what we want to do. Well, we want to execute that that terminal. And you can see that it's run away now. It's gone to raspberrypi.org and it's now doing the upgrades. Now, I've done this before, so it shouldn't, shouldn't take long. Okay, and it is done. So there you go. So I can keep running that file for as many times as I want. Um, and I can go. I can email it to my friend who maybe can't type or something, and he, he wants to update his Raspberry Pi. So I could send him that now, and he can keep his Raspberry Pi up to date. Um, you know, it, it could be used for so so many different reasons. You know, maybe you've got a, a, a shelf full of Raspberry Pis or something, all doing slightly different things. You can just keep running this script on each of them. You can keep the scripts on the desktop, and then you know periodically just double click and it'll run it or you can actually set the scripts up to run on on um, boot up or whatever i don't i don't know there's just millions of different uses for them they're not suitable for everything um and i'm fairly confident that um you know there's a place and a time and a place for everything as james um, told me uh, yesterday afternoon um there's a time and a place for for scripts and I, I totally agree. I think that is uh, that is important to remember, but they can be hugely time-saving uh, things. But we'll whip back over and I'll show you what I've done with them. Um, so if we go into the SDR Play one here, you can see that I've done five sort of scripts. And if I open this one up with the text editor, the last one, you can see that they're, they're getting slightly more sort of serious. And what I've been doing is just basically cutting and pasting from the um the build guide that uh, andy from sdr play sent me over and you can sort of see here what i've been doing i've i've basically if i scroll down to the bottom because this was one of the last ones you can see that i've taken all of the, the last commands and i've actually rammed out the the headings um, and removed the little equal signs uh, sort of graphics as it were um or the underscores whatever um, and i've just rammed out the, the headings there and so that they don't get uh, read um, but the rest of it just runs in the normal way so it's effectively as if I've typed that in um, and the end result I'm sure that you'll want to see the end result is that now when I run um, cubic SDR it should it should work we'll see um, I can now run cubic SDR. It now sees the Raspberry Pi. I'm not going to make any, uh, sorry, it now sees the SDR play. I'm not going to change any of this stuff. But when I start that, it runs absolutely fine. Um, and I'm not sure if the, the audio is coming through on that. Um, but it will do if I turn it on, I'm sure. There you go. If I, if I unmute it. Can you hear that? Um, I'll mute it again. Um, so yeah, so it's it's running absolutely um, fine now. Um, my next step is probably to install um, uh, WSJTX. Um, 
And I wonder if I'll do that. Will it do that? No, it won't do that. Oh, it will do that. Um, so my next plan really would be to run sort of something at WSJTX. Now you could, if you wanted to, do this all manually, and you can you can put that in the um, in the actual terminal. You could type in you know all of that sort of stuff manually in there. Um, and do it one line at a time or cut and paste or do whatever you want in in the command line but like I said before it takes so much time doing it um, I think um, that is pretty much it but I'll, I'll, what I'll, I'll say I'll try and um, I will make these, these files available for you if you're interested I'm also going to put FL Digi and WSJTX um, on, on here as well and what I might do is I'll, I'll try and um, keep those files as well if you're interested um and um yeah just um yeah enjoy your raspberry pies because they are quite good fun um but like i said before i'm sure um you know you do all of this stuff at your own risk it's not um it's not something that uh, i would undertake lightly make sure that you back up your raspberry pi image before you do any of this stuff um so and um, you know don't blame me if it all goes wrong as it will knowing linux it will it will go wrong um stay safe and um i hope that uh, i might speak to you you never know in the week if you uh, if you call the store um and uh, you know do say hello um i've had a week off um which is why i've been doing um like film videos and all sorts of things when I've been out on my lockdown uh, walks but anyway stay safe see you soon ciao